Okay, so uh, basically this is what the car render looks like right now. So that's what we've done so far. And it looks the car looks pretty good, but then you have this like plane there that's supposed to be catching shadows, but it's like that's not supposed to be there. So basically, this is really simple. You just click on the plane, go into the material settings, new material and then go to shadow shadow only and that's like will only show the shadows and have the rest transparent speaking of transparency I'm not I can't remember if if I uh, told you that now in blender if you wanna Export it with transparency. You have to change this to transparent. But right now, I'm going to keep it as sky because I want to see the background for the preview. Okay. Now we have to animate the car, basically. So, what I like to do to make animating the car a lot simpler is... I'm just going to hide this real fast. H to hide. Um, and hide everything else. Okay, now click A to select everything, make sure there's an active object, and just control J, I think, maybe, yes, it's control J, and that will join the entire car. So, you don't have to do this, you can parent stuff, and if you have the car rigged, you can just use the, uh, main bone but I like to do this because it makes things a lot simpler and easier to keep track of all the uh, all the uh, animation stuff and not as many objects to move then you click all H to get your hidden objects back okay now basically what you do is time to animate the car so animate it from uh, your camera view because it will be useful and uh, you can auto key, but I prefer to just click location, rotation right there. And so that time, every time, that way, every time I make a uh, key, it doesn't ask me if I want location, rotation, or location scale. It just does location, rotation. So by making a key, you just click I. So I'm going to click I at the first frame. And. Uh, then right here since I just want to see um, if this matches up to the video yeah the video is I think just a still image right now so if you were actually doing this and having someone float the car you'd want to uh, match the movement up with their uh, movement basically but uh, I don't this is just a still image right now so then I'm going to just move it up a little right here. And uh, this is just the main stuff because uh, later I'm going to go back and tweak it so it doesn't look like it just straight forward coming up. It looks a little bit like more it's floating. So click I again to make another keyframe. And uh, just continue to do so as you would like an RR to uh, rotate freely like this and I and let's see just the basis of what that looks like it looks fine and uh, then just right here right here that's a G just move it out of the screen but also further away so it doesn't just look like it's going off off the screen it looks like it's going uh, small, smaller and uh, that's what you want so uh, X actually on the X axis yeah right there and then over here I just keyframe that and uh, 
that's basically how you do it. Now, when you're re going back here, when the car's like floating up, you don't want it just come straight up because it looks too, you know, mechanical, blah blah blah. So just randomly just move it like at one point and uh, I, and it will look a little bit more natural. And also check to see what it looks like in the render when it's floating because you want the shadows to come in right. So uh, I have it at 25% so it just renders a little bit faster and new window so you don't have to go back between uh, the two things. So just F12 or click render. So uh, uh, basically also when it's really your choice how to set up your sun depending on where the sun in real life would be. Make sure, I already went through this, but make sure that you have uh, cast shadows on it or else you do not get this. You just get the ambient occlusion and it doesn't look as good, nearly as good. Um, and you can pump up the samples a little bit for stuff like that, but it's slur. So basically all you have to do is go into the compositor, which is... Sorry, my uh, screen recording thing is kind of walking. Okay. Um, right here. So use nodes. You don't have to do this stuff. If you have like After Effects and you have real smart motion blur, that would be a lot better actually. But I don't really have real smart motion blur installed, so I'm just going to do this. Oh. Okay, so go into this tab. Usually it was in the render tab, but now it's here in this other one. Click vector, and that is the pass you want. Now click. You may, you might want to, you might want to backdrop, but uh, doesn't matter. I'm gonna actually change it to uh, transparent right now. RGBA and transparent. Great. Uh, I believe it is filter, yes, filter, vector blur, and just connect it right here, okay, and then connect, this already automatically connects, um, connect the Z into the Z, but, okay, sorry. It's kind of being weird. Connect the Z into the Z and connect the speed into the speed. Whoops. It does this sometimes because I have the screen recording thing on. Okay. So that is actually, that's it actually. Now if you just render it. It should have more motion. It's going to have a lot more motion blur the faster it goes. But uh, I don't even have to render it. That's basically, that's just it. You're done. Thank you for watching. If you have any tutorials you would like to see me do on Blender, After Effects. Not as much After Effects, but uh, uh, anything. Um, just let me know in the comments. Uh, please thumbs up this video if you liked it. Um, and also check out my main channel, which I might put a link up for, and it's going to be in the description. That's where I have all my actual videos. These are just uh, little videos I make on the side. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, see you in the next tutorial.